Welcome back everyone, uh, it's here. And today I've got some r slash best of for you all. As per usual, I'll be reading you the posts, giving you my opinions, and I hope you do the same down in the comments below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. This post was gathered by Lucia Aria Rose, and their tagline is, I'm keeping the garlic. Am I the asshole for switching out my daughter's school lunches behind my wife's back? The original poster is Last Advice 5907, posted to r slash am I the asshole. My wife, Sara, 36 female, and I, 35 male, have an 11-year-old daughter named Lily. Lily had begun attending the 6th grade in September, but this problem only recently became a major issue. Sara is Indian and makes great dishes that the whole family enjoys and tends to pack these lunches for Lily as well. She typically packs Lily a rice with dal in a container or something similar, which she had no issues with in elementary school. However, recently, Lily came home sobbing to her mom and I about the lunches she took. The kids at school had been making fun of her food, which absolutely made my heart break. I had struggled with the same thing at her age. I come from a Chinese family and would always take homemade food to school too. And when I asked her if she wanted us to report the problem, she begged us not to, so she wouldn't be called a snitch. Or worse. When Sara heard this, she simply contacted the principal, which I didn't want to resort to at first, and left the issue, telling Lily she wouldn't be buying school lunch and to just ignore the other kids. The same problem occurred every day. Lily would be coming home feeling extremely upset and there were even times Sara would yell at Lily for not even touching her school lunch. We both had talks with Lily about her culture and how she should be proud. We've contacted the schools, but the school is ignorant of the issue. They simply had a talk with the parents and ended there. And Lily isn't budging. I don't want her to starve because so many days she doesn't even eat her lunch. I know how brutal middle schoolers can be and I don't want Lily to feel insecure or upset even if it meant making her take other lunches, but Sara refuses to make other lunches. So, I began to make other lunches for Lily, like sandwiches or sometimes mac and cheese, so she'd feel more comfortable eating it in school in front of her classmates as a final resort when nothing else worked. I would take Lily's lunch for myself at work and pack her own lunch early in the morning, which she finished and seemed happier when coming home daily after. However, this only worked for about two weeks until Sara found out and was infuriated. She said I was denying Lily her culture and she needed to learn to stop being insulted by other kids, telling me I'm raising Lily to get whatever she wants. Is Sara right? Am I the asshole? Edit bringing this post and topic up tonight. I'll post an update when I can. Hopefully this is enough to convince Sara. If not, I'll do what other comments said and just keep packing Lily's lunch or let her pick. Some of OP's comments. Commenter, not the asshole. You don't have to use every single meal to celebrate your culture. Getting the kid to eat something is way more important. OP responds, 100%. She's been eating her lunches since I switched them out. In regards to Sara, I think Sara's heart is in the right place. I'm talking to her soon, but otherwise, I agree. She's not exactly going out with it in the right way. We can preserve her culture in other ways at home. OP was voted not the asshole. Update post, 8 hours later. Okay, so I'll start by saying thank you all for the comments. A lot of people agreed with me. Some told me I should let Lily pick her lunch. I showed the post to Sara and it took about an hour or so, but we both sat down and talked with Lily on where she wants to go from here and she said she liked the lunches I packed for her, etc. However, we also figured out this bullying had been going on for longer than just two to three weeks. So Sara agreed to let Lily take whatever lunch she wanted on the condition that she eat homemade food, Chinese or Indian, for dinner or breakfast still, and we all agreed. So, Sara got her part in it. As for the school, since the principal hardly did anything, we reached out to the school board superintendent and are still waiting for a response. I think this would solve the issue better too, and when we get a response, I'll post a second update. Thank you for the advice. OP's comments. Commenter, I'm so glad you were able to get through to your wife and that you're escalating the bullying issue further. Out of curiosity, do you only eat Chinese and Indian food at home? I can imagine it's hard to keep in contact with your culture and that's a strong way to do it, but I grew up eating food from many world cultures at home, including each of my parents in my country, along with that of many other countries from around the world, so was surprised by that aspect. It didn't really occur to me that some people only eat food from one culture until reading this. 
Of course, Indian and Chinese cuisine allows for a wide range of delicious food, and there's restaurants for anything else, so I don't blame you. I'm really glad some flexibility has been allowed, as forcing is one way to make your child resent her culture, which would be so sad. OP responds, Nope. Although, I see how what I said is misleading. She orders out some nights. We make pizza or other meals some other nights, and definitely not always on special occasions. Final update, a bit over two weeks later. So, I'm sorry for taking so long to update, but we managed to resolve everything. The superintendent and school board were actually incredibly helpful and got back to us within two days to schedule a meeting about this. I don't want to go too much into detail, but there were two specific girls who played a big role in the bullying. I believe one of them got detention for some time, and another got suspended because she'd done this before. Their parents were also super apologetic and supportive of Lily, and didn't try to get in the way of the consequences, which was really nice. As for Lily, she's doing much better and is definitely more content and happier when she comes home from school. Thank you. Kids can be fucking ghouls, oh my god. Honestly, as someone who only recently really got into more global cuisines in the last five years, I, I this, this kind of breaks my heart because, I mean, I know how amazing it can be to branch out and it's really awesome that she has this direct connection to a culture that just actively has this as part of their palate. And yeah, it very much should be celebrated, and I'm happy they took the route of working with the child to make sure she wouldn't grow to resent her culture, because that would be heartbreaking even further. I gotta commend the father for stepping up and trying to do something, and I honestly can't really blame the mother for trying to put her foot down and make sure that her daughter can stand up for herself. But sometimes shit happens. And children can be cruel. It's also complete bullshit the principal couldn't do shit and they had to go to the school board to get anything done. I think the principal probably knew what was going on, but just didn't give a shit. I mean, that unfortunately happens pretty often. But the school board, however, they knew they might have a lawsuit on their hands if they didn't step in and do something. This post was gathered by Direct Caterpillar 77 Their tagline is, Satan is not a pogo stick. This one's actually posted externally and was uploaded by Allison Green on askamanager.org. And it's titled, My Coworker with Imposter Syndrome Actually Does Suck at Her Job. Originally posted February 26th, 2018. A reader writes, I'm a woman and have a female coworker who, like most of us, myself included, struggles with imposter syndrome. Here's the thing, Allison. She is legitimately terrible at her job. She'll bungle something up and someone will need to go to bail her out. Projects that should take two weeks, take a year. Seriously. She claims to be making an effort to learn the technical skills required to do her job, but I have seen little to no improvement in the five, yes that's right, five years she's been at the company. We have interns outperforming her. It's routine that she's unable to perform her task. So someone else does it for her and then she often takes the credit. She claims that she's not respected by coworkers because she's a woman, but no, it's because her work speaks for itself. This coworker often comes to me to discuss being a woman in the workplace and imposter syndrome, seemingly looking for validation. Whenever she messes something up or doesn't understand something, she chalks up her feelings of not understanding to imposter syndrome and decides she's actually skilled after all. It's more like Dunning-Kruger than imposter. I've spent dozens of hours teaching her to do things that she ultimately forgets and bailing her out of simple tasks. As women, we're constantly reminded to build up other women in the workplace. I feel like she expects this of me. She often cries about imposter syndrome and then I feel bad and try to say some platitudes like, hey, you can learn how to do this to make her feel better. I feel uncomfortable when she cries to me at work and feel as if a boundary is being crossed. In addition to being part of her personal mentorship squad slash cleanup crew, I feel emotionally manipulated. I don't know how to handle this. We share a manager who knows about her technical misgivings and how much of a resource drain she is. But he's inexplicably to everyone who works with her, kept her employed here for five years. So I don't know what I'd even say to him. I find it unlikely that I'll be able to affect her employment situation. How do I extricate myself from being who she looks to for validation? Any other tips on dealing with a person like this? Update, December 20th, 2018. Nearly 10 months later. I took the advice and did a lot better at short-circuiting conversations that veered towards the emotional. 
It felt extremely weird at first because I'd start going back to work and looking at my computer screen while she was still in my office staring at me. But eventually, she got the point and would leave. It didn't totally stop, but the conversations ended a lot sooner. The coworker still acts insane, but I got a lot better at redirecting away from myself. A few months after the letter, I moved to a different team at the company and I'm totally loving it. As a result, I don't have much more interaction with that specific coworker. When I told her I was leaving the team for a new opportunity, she didn't wish me well. She immediately started talking about how, oh yeah, well I got a job offer too, but I turned it down. Okay. I don't think I believed it, but that's besides the point. In the weeks after I started my new job, she actually tried asking me to physically come to her location and do some of her work. I didn't play ball here. She stopped asking pretty fast. I occasionally see her when I visit my old boss. The commenters on the original post really went after him for allowing her ineptitude and the surrounding circus, but he was an amazing boss for a lot of reasons and I consider him a mentor. When I see her now, she bizarrely starts monologuing about how challenging, important, influential her work is. It… it isn't. It seems like she feels the need to prove herself to me now in front of her boss. It's a strange interaction every time. Then later, she'll often ping me and complain about how she's having a hard time with work, personal life, imposter syndrome, or whatever. Now that I'm removed from it, I totally see that her game is pretend to know what she's doing, and when someone figures out she doesn't, play the woman card and make people, particularly people in power, feel bad for her, instead of actually working to get better at her job. This trick seems to have had moderate success so far, even on myself. I put up with her nonsense for too long, but I suspect it'll catch up with her eventually. There's rumors that her team is going to be disbanded or reorganized or something. My old boss admitted that he's trying to help her build skills so she's actually employable by someone else after that happens. Ha. Anyway, glad I'm no longer involved in that hot mess and can just watch from the sidelines. Setting boundaries really helped me be less of a target for her and will help me deal with other difficult coworkers in the future. Thanks for the advice. Honestly, yeah, that sounded like perfect advice to give, uh, simply just by not allowing your coworkers to get away with asking you for help and shutting them down and not, I guess, falling for their tricks and traps and putting your foot down. There will be a time where everything eventually catches up with her and, you know, she's gonna get found out or, I mean, honestly, unfortunately, it sounds like everyone fucking knows and they just put up with it probably out of pity. Because the thing is, is that people like your coworker, they're not just venting to you. They're venting to everybody. I mean, hell, it's probably everyone, including her coworkers, not just you, and even her boss that she pulls these cards on in hopes that it gives her a bit more time and it bought her five years of essentially a free paycheck by the sounds of it. It's almost commendable if this was a Fortune 500 company that deserved this kind of incompetence being put up below their throne and it wasn't hurting other employees around them. This post was collected by Lucy Aria Rose and their tagline is I'm keeping the garlic. And I've seen some of you asking what the tagline means. It's just a funny little identifying tag they add to their name. It's kind of like a nickname or a phrase they go by. And I find them fun and charming, so I read them every time. The original poster was Throw Away Son of Sands, and he posted to r slash relationship advice. My, 35 male, mother's, 38 female, new fiancé wants me to call him dad. He's, he's 24. How do I navigate this? Originally posted November 12, 2024. Please buckle in because this is all so weird. I'm a 35-year-old man, and for some backstory, my dad died when I was 19, leaving my mom with me and my two siblings. I'm the oldest. It took some time, but eventually my mom started dating again. We don't live together per se, but our house is back into each other and have a gate, so it's pretty common for her to offer to do my laundry or me to just go over for dinner or go look after our dog, you know, that kind of stuff. Plus, me and my siblings go over there for dinner every other Friday night or so. A bit after she started, the men she's been dating have been getting younger and younger and I've never had a problem with them. She's been very open to me and my siblings that she wants to get married again and we've always been supportive, at least after the initial shocks, lol. The latest guy is by far the most serious and they've been dating since around last June? He proposed at the start of autumn and they want to get married next summer. Again, me and my siblings are fine with this because it's her life and we trust him. 
he's a nice guy and they clearly love each other. But anyway, so long and short is this weekend, her fiance, let's, let's call him Phil, calls me and asks me if I could come over. I say, yeah, sure, I'll be over after work. And I assumed he just needed help with some DIY stuff they're doing. When I get over there, he calls me sport and says we need to talk. I should mention this is something he does to me and my little brother, calling us things like kids, sports, scout, little buddy, or my personal favorite, calling us red and blue, seemingly out of nowhere. My brother is 30, by the way. He tried it with my sister, 28, two once, and called her princess. Once. But he stopped when she just stared at him. Something with Phil is that he reminds me a lot of Charlie Day's character in Horrible Bosses, and that his sole ambition has always been to meet a girl, get married, and have a family. When he told me and my brother this, my brother made some joke about how maybe our mom's going to come short on the last part. And he got very upset, but they made up after. Anyway, so I go around and I ask if my mom's around and he says no, it's just him and that we really need to talk man to man. I say sure, and he starts talking about how he's always wanted to be a father, etc. and raise a son to call his own. And then he drops this bombshell saying, Now I know I can never replace your father, the man who made you, but it would mean the world to me if you could call me dad. I admit it. I snickered a little bit, and then I knew he was serious because he looked like he was about to cry, and he didn't drop it either. I asked if he really meant it, and he got really emotional and started talking about what it means to be a man and how his purpose is to have and provide for a family, and he wants me and my siblings to be part of that family. Like, he reiterated he'll never replace my father, and this did rub me the wrong way a bit, but he is ready to step up and be my dad, and provide for and protect me and my siblings. And I'm just sat there thinking like, dude, I'm a decade older than you and live in a separate house. I don't need providing for. And even if I did, I don't think a guy a third of my age who works part time at the hardware store and is into collecting manga is the man to do it. No offense if you are into that, lol. Just I, I, I don't know. I was a bit taken back. I was in shock. So just said, okay and he gets emotional again, but in a happy way, talking about how he wants to go camping or go to a baseball game. I, I don't even like baseball, Lamal. And how he joined the Lions this year and how he wants to bring me into it too as his boy, which just feels so for real, even more so as I'm a Shriner, so all this talk of service and charity isn't the brag he thinks it is. Because again, I'm 10 years older than this guy. Well, I ended it by just saying this has gotten a bit too weird and I was going home. He got very upset and I left. Called my brother and he agreed. It sounds weird as fuck. Later, my mom called me and oh, she wasn't disappointed, but admitted it's made him very upset and depressed. I told her that if he's embarrassed, he doesn't need to be. I get it. He's excited about the marriage and we can just laugh this off as a funny story. She then said that wasn't what he was upset about. He, and she a bit too, is upset about the fact that he poured his heart out and I rejected him. She said, yeah, it is a bit kooky, but this is how he proves to himself that he's a man. And I guess I was a bit angry and said something like, first off, it's not my job to certify what's between his legs. And second, this doesn't prove he's a man. It, it just proves he's a nut job. I apologized immediately, but... She said she didn't want to hear it and hung up. She called back 10 minutes later and we apologized and she begged me to just go along with it until he has some kids to call his own. I won't go too much into the details here, but she sort of let slip they plan to try IVF treatment because she's not ready to give up being a mom just yet. And while I uh, have my own thoughts about whether or not that's a good idea, I'm not here to litigate on that. We finished up fine and I reiterated, I'd support her and she agreed that it definitely is a stressful situation for me, but begged me to at least think about it. Which leads me to here. I did think it over and obviously I'm going to say no. I had a dad and he died. Rest in peace, dad. And that's the only dad I've ever needed, I've ever wanted, and I'll ever bestow that title on. I'm not asking if someone's unreasonable. 
or what I should do, more so what I should say. This clearly means a lot to him for some reason and I deeply love my mom so want to try and minimize the damage, especially as we're still so involved in each other's lives and they live behind me. How can I make it clear to them, as painlessly as possible, that I think this is weird and borderline offensive? I really don't want to rip the band-aid off because I fear what it might do to the family. Edit, I showed my brother the post and he laughed so hard he started coughing. Then, said we should call him Dr. Phil and each other blue and red, so swap the nicknames he gave us around. That's edit two. As people were asking, he has no access to my mom's money or anything like that. She rents the house and it came pre-furnished and otherwise has no real assets. She doesn't make a lot of money anyways, so there's no pecuniary motive we could think of. Some of OP's comments. Commenter. I wonder if he grew up without a dad. He's giving off a weird 1950s energy to this whole thing that feels like he only knows about dads from seeing them on the telly. Oh no, his dad's still alive, both parents are. I've met them. They definitely feel odd but the whole situation but go along with it for his sake could you compromise and call him pa or something the thing is it became apparent it's more than just a name to him he explicitly wants to do father-son activities with me and my brother with him as the dad despite the fact that we're both older than him commenter if it's so important to his personal identity to find a girl have kids with her and raise them as their dad it seems like marrying a 58-year-old woman with adult children significantly older than himself is a pretty ineffective way to achieve those life goals. If it's so important to him, he should find someone his own age and make that happen the normal way. It's not your responsibility to make your mom's boy toy feel like a man. You're closer to being his much older brother than his son. Just weird. OP responds, me and my siblings all think he has issues talking to the girls his own age. And so it led to this. Commenter, I also get that you're supporting your mom, but maybe question her having a kid of 58, like does she plan to be around for graduation, marriages, grandkids? It sounds like your mom is having some empty nest issues and is illogically trying to start over. If she got pregnant today, she would be around 77 years old when her kid graduated. Considering she hasn't even started trying yet, that means she will be in her 80s when the kid graduates. That, that isn't realistic. Also, I have a 5 and 7 year old and I'm only 38 years old and already feel tired all the time. I can't even imagine what a 58 year old would feel like. OP responds, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't actually see this ever going ahead. Hence why I'm happy to say, yeah, of course I'll support you. Because I guess I just can't imagine. Push comes to shove, her actually getting the treatment greenlit. I did raise the age stuff and she just said, people live a lot longer these days. Commenter, I, I don't know what his endgame is here. If it's a mental health problem or he's trying to create some legal precedent that he intends to exploit later, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to explain, defend, or justify this decision. Hope he responds. The endgame? I genuinely think he just wants to start a family or at least pretend that he's the dad of one. Ever since we met him, it's all he'd ever really go on about and how he needs to be a dad to become a man. Very early on, he asked me if I ever planned to have kids and I said no. And he got quite taken aback, like a mixture of offense and confusion and sort of seemed to imply I'm either gay, I, I am, but shh, or trans because I don't want to be a man then. Commenter. Hope it works out in the long run, but I, I was laughing so hard by the end. Such a crazy situation. I think you should talk with your mom and maybe hang out with her fiance, but as bros, that's some weird dad situation. OP responds, I have offered this, but every time me and my brother do, he definitely tries to act like the man of the group or sets us up for more explicit father-son activities or just talks about how desperate he is to be a father. A personal favorite was a time when he got his phone out and started reading some pearls of wisdom he'd obviously found online about his probable low self-esteem. Yeah, I want to be gentle because I do think he has that warped self-esteem and a lot of other issues. Definitely not all with it. I do know his parents and they're totally normal, nice people who go along with this for his sake. He's mentioned internet friends and friends from a D&D &D group, but I've never met them. Me and my siblings have tried talking with his parents, but from the way they've come across, 
they really don't want to get involved anymore, then they have to, unfortunately. But thank you. Hopefully the conclusion of this will be gentle. Update post, November 16th, 2024, four days later. Original post, and slightly amended the title for clarity. Anyway, so I told both my siblings and we agreed we'd collectively put our foot down with Phil at our next family dinner next week. Especially after an incident where Phil referred to my brother as sport and asked if he wanted to go see a baseball game with him. Admittedly, I was a bit spurred on by what you all said and got involved. Pinging him back with, aw, no tickets for me, daddy? And my brother responded with, daddy wants me all to himself. Hmm, hot. And Phil took a few minutes to respond before saying he was shocked, speechless, and disgusted. He then messaged me in private to say he was utterly appalled and that he'd never disrespect his own father the way you boys did. I kind of lost it at this point and said, right, that's because you're not my father, Phil. You're a 24-year-old man-child dating my mother. You have no right to my respect, especially not to the respect a father gets. I, I immediately said sorry, but then blocked his number and left the group chat. Apparently, he sent a similar thing to my brother who responded with more daddy stuff and Phil blocked him. Well, uh, that aside, I don't think that family dinner is going ahead. After the original post blew up, it seems someone from his Lions Club found it and reported it to their chair or whatever, and Phil has either been expelled or resigned or in the process of one of the two. He has removed nearly all mentions of the Lions from his social media and no longer mentions being a member with his last post on it being some cryptic goodbye post where he kind of drones on about what it means to be a man in the modern day and the duty of fatherhood bestowed upon all men at birth. Just really weird shit. My mom called me half in a panic, half in a rage after about the stuff I'd been telling about him before breaking down and saying that we need to meet, which we did and got my brother to go over too. I know he has temporarily moved back in with his parents in the next town over, but from my understanding, they still want to go ahead with the wedding, but I think that's more so because they've already spent money on it. When she said she was determined to have more kids, plural, my brother did step up and asked if she really thought that was a good idea at her age, and I pointed out that assuming that she had the baby next year and she lived to be 80, they still wouldn't have finished college. She just stammered on about how people live longer these days, before breaking down crying and admitting that she's not ready to give up on motherhood due to some deep-seated trauma and fears about the family breaking apart that I won't go into for her sake. When we reassured her that we weren't going anywhere, she calmed down and we had a very good, honest conversation where she's agreed to drop the IVF stuff on the grounds that it'd be too expensive and unlikely to get greenlit. But she's still adamant it's scientifically possible and she should be allowed to do it from an ethical standpoint because she has to win that argument and has agreed to look into fostering instead. Me and my brother highly doubt anything will ever come of that, so we're not that worried anymore. The very good news is that she's also agreed to look into therapy and psychiatric help to deal with her trauma and we've helped her get in touch with a nice lady in town to unpack all this in a much more healthy way. So at least one person is getting the help they need. I have no idea what's happened with Phil or what's going to happen with him, but I did make it clear to my mom that he is not my dad. He's not even my stepdad. I, I'm not a kid. And he's never going to be either one outside of legal fuckery. She relented pretty quickly. I think she's finally broken out of her shell at least. And we've agreed that if things go ahead, that's going to be a huge red line. Though I don't know if he'll want to be friends with me after all this. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for the help on the original post, y'all. Update, same post, November 17th, 2024, next day. Edit, bit of an update as I can't respond to everybody, but I think the marriage is off. Phil has gone AWOL, again, and has had a huge argument with his family as they've demanded he call off the wedding and date people his own age. This apparently made him snap. Me and my mom have met his mom and older brother who said Phil is very insecure around girls his own age and has never been able to talk to them, hence his preference. This very deeply upset my mom and after some begging from all of us, she's agreed to push the wedding back, though she wants to keep dating him. I have 
no idea where Phil is. Though his brother assumes he's couch surfing with his D&D friends who've been sending me and my brother some not nice messages because clearly we're just jealous of the MILF hunter. So if any of you socially enough fucks are reading this, I don't need to chase middle-aged folk because I can talk to boys my own age like a normal person. Peace! Alright, so we're gonna leave this commentary pretty short. Uh, first things first, I think it's a power play, that's why he's asking to be called dad because he wants the power rush. And second, obviously he has no respect for the mother, or else he wouldn't refer to himself as the MILF hunter to his friends. Hopefully OP's mother can get out of this uh, circus of a situation, holy hell. Uh, don't forget, this is brought to you by Gamersups. Use code odds at checkout. It's basically a caffeine powder that you put in your water, and I actually really like it. I use this on a daily basis. Don't forget that every purchase you make using code odds directly supports the channel. And if you want a personal recommendation from me, I would either recommend the soda pressing pear or dragon fruit punch. Those two are currently my favorite flavors. And as a note, once we sell a certain amount of stuff, I get my own flavor and my own cup. And you all know I'm going to choose some degenerate shit that's going to make their PR team squirm. My goal is to make them regret partnering with me. So please, use code eyes at checkout to make my dream come true of making a PR team squirm.